Thank you very much, Senator Collins. Uh, like Senator Casey, I apologize for being late. We're kind of running multiple things at once. But I had to come and join this group again this year and to say a special thank you to Senator Collins for pulling us all together. This is really a terrific annual event. And I also want to say a special shout out, since we're all getting to do that, to Jeffrey D'Angelo from Plymouth, Massachusetts. Where are you, Jeffrey? I can't see in the sea of blue. Good to see you, Jeffrey. All right. So we've all been talking about the cost of diabetes. Uh, type 1 diabetes it imposes, obviously, a terrible personal cost on our kids, on their families. And the financial costs are staggering. Nearly 40% of families with diabetic children experience financial strain and care for type 1 diabetes costs our health system an estimated $15 billion a year. So I want to start on the cost question from a different direction. Dr. Rogers, if we could delay the onset or reduce the severity of type 1 diabetes so that millions of Americans could stop buying insulin, glucose monitors, test strips, if we could stop paying the costs of doctor's visits to emergency rooms, about what do you estimate we could save every year? Well, uh, Senator Warren, there's no doubt that if we could prevent um, diabetes from occurring uh, and reduce the severity of the disease, that would result in a tremendous cost savings. And I think um, uh, organizations like the JDRF have, have actually cost estimated what that would would result in, a 10% or 20%. The NIH hasn't uh, made any of those cost estimates, uh, uh, to my knowledge. What I can tell you, though, and as I referred to before, a major cost is associated with these secondary complications, the eye disease, the kidney disease, the non-traumatic amputations. And, and we think that certainly we've, we've already, and I, I mentioned previously, some of the benefits that we see in terms of cost effectiveness uh, in the treatment of these secondary complications, one could potentially do uh, estimations uh, on those. But I, I don't have sitting here today a, a good estimate to tell you how much precisely we could. Uh, okay, say. but I, I take it though, based on some of the estimates that JDRF have given us, you know, a 10% reduction would be about $3 billion. In other words, a lot of money that we're talking about here. And when you combine it with the devastating human cost, you think it would be a no-brainer to invest more money in research on diabetes. So let's pin this down just a little bit more. Dr. Rogers, you direct the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney, Kidney Diseases. So how much money do you have for your work compared and in inflation adjusted with what you had 10 years ago? Uh, that's uh, a question that if one were to include in addition to our regular appropriations as well as a special diabetes uh, uh, program appropriations, uh, because of inflation, uh, NIDDK has lost about 24% in our buying power over that. So year. here we are, we see the costs imposed, and yet you've got effectively about 24% less money to work with than you had 10 years ago for the kind of research that you're doing. And as we know, you are not alone. NIH funding overall is down 25% since 2003. That means for NIH, we are investing about $12.5 billion less in medical research this year than if we had just kept up with inflation over the last decade. Now, last week, the House passed the 21st Century Cures Act, which includes the Cures Innovation Fund that is meant to give NIH about $1.9 billion per year for the next five years. You know, that doesn't fill a $12.5 billion hole, but it certainly is something. But here's what I'm concerned about in this bill. I'm concerned the NIH may not even get that much. Before this bill passed the House, a section requiring the appropriators to continue to fund the NIH at current levels was taken out. This is called a maintenance of effort provision, and without it, there's nothing to stop 
Congress from cutting the NIH is adding 1.9 at the top, but cutting 1.9 billion from their base budget, or for that matter, cutting 2 billion from their budget or 4 billion from their budget in order to try to cut government spending overall. And if that happened, NIH's budget wouldn't actually increase at all, even when the 1.9 billion from the Cures Innovation Fund is added on top. So let me ask you, Dr. Zagohani, if the result of the 21st Century Cures Bill is a new fund that gets great fanfare but doesn't actually result in any additional money for NIH, does that help the research community? But, uh, um, actually, I'm, I began to downsize my laboratory because I could not get uh, um, uh, the appropriate funding to maintain. I was speaking with the director of NIH uh, um, uh, Dr. Roger, and I need to have three R01 grants, three grants, uh, about a two million dollar um, piece uh, every five years. So all together, in order to maintain my operation going. So because I couldn't do it uh, for the last two years, uh, I have started downsizing. So downsizing is not only the economics for the people. It's uh, the research that in now is going to be stopped. We can't make progress. Uh, and there is one more problem. While doing this research is I'm training people to take over when I, uh, I'm uh, out. I can no longer train those people anymore. So we're hurting ourselves at many, many different uh, points. So, so what you're saying is you can't maintain. In fact, you're cutting back. You're certainly not in a position to grow the research. Families struggling with diabetes, with Parkinson's, with Alzheimer's, other serious conditions deserve more than lip service from Congress. They deserve real increases in funding on medical research. And that's what we need to do. I introduced a Medical Innovation Act that could boost the NIH budget by 20%. It's not enough, but it's a start. I hope Senate colleagues will join me in this effort. or improve the 21st century cures bill so that it's really about additional money or bring other ideas to the table for more money for medical research. If we're serious about saving lives through research and saving money, then Congress has to step up and make a real commitment of real dollars. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you.